Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 16 of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to talk about classes and objects. Now, object-oriented programming is the act of modeling real-world objects in code. Real-world objects have attributes and capabilities. So, for example, a person has attributes such as height and weight and names, and they have capabilities such as being able to talk, walk, and eat. With object-oriented programming, we store the attributes in variables called fields. Then we model capabilities using functions, which we call methods. And a class is just simply a blueprint we use to define an object's attributes or fields and capabilities or methods. Now I want to jump over and model a dog object as an example. So we're going to start by defining the object's name. So I said I want to model dog, so I'll just put in dog. Follow that up with a colon. Now you're going to define the initiation method, which is going to be called every single time you create a dog object in this example. And you just type two underscores, init, two underscores. Self is going to allow us to refer to our object because we will not know what the user is ultimately going to name their dog. So if we want to refer to the object, we will just refer to it using the keyword self. Then I will define any attributes or parameters that I want set when every single time we create a new dog object, such as name, and I throw a default value inside of there. I can then set its height to be equal to zero and its weight also equal to zero. Then we have a colon. And then what I need to do is go and assign these values if passed in. And again, I want to refer to our object. So I'm going to put self inside of here. So if they pass in a name, I'm going to assign that name. Again, if they pass in a height, I will assign that height. And weight, I will also assign. And that's all that I need to do with that initiation function. And now what I need to do is define what happens whenever the dog is asked to demonstrate multiple different capabilities. So if our, our dog, for example, can run, I'm going to define what happens whenever we ask it to run. Now in the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to create more interactive objects that will interact with each other, but I'm going to keep this simple here just to start off. So I'll just say that it runs, and then inside of here I will go and put in the name of our dog that we create. And then I can do this for all the other different capabilities we want to simulate. So eating, again we'll just say how the dog is going to eat. The dog eats. And then put in the name once again, just by referring to the object itself with self and then name, and then we will come in and also define that the dog can bark. And I'm just going to copy this and paste it in and just change this to barks. And there we go. So we've defined all of the attributes of our dog objects as well as the capabilities. Now I can come down inside of here and create our main function. And we can create and work with different dogs. So let's say we want to create a new dog object named Spot. All we need to do is go spot is equal to, followed with dog, and then pass in all those things that we said our dog objects can have. So the name spot, 66 and 26. Of course, that's going to be the height as well as the weight. Then after we create that dog object, we could come in and just say spot and call bark. Come down here and call our main function to execute and you can see spot the dog barks comes up over there. And now what I want to do is demonstrate how getters and setters can be used to protect our objects from assigning bad data or to provide improved or custom output. And how we're going to do this is by creating another object and this is going to be a square object we're going to simulate this time. So let's just get rid of that all together and get rid of this. Okay, so our new class is going to simulate a square. 
So square and the attributes that are going to be assigned whenever we create our new square objects are going to be height, which we're going to assign to the value of zero as a string, and width, which we're going to do the same for. Again, we're going to then take those values that are passed inside of it and assign those. And width is equal to width. And now we will create a getter function. And basically, getters are going to be used to provide either custom values or to provide some type of output on the screen anytime the user tries to access or retrieve a value. And to start with, we're going to go at property. And at property is just going to define that any call to height is going to return the code in the height method that follows after it. So we'll just say define and height. And we could do something like signal that we're retrieving information. We could also come in here and go and take whatever the value for height is and put something like feet or inches or whatever we would like. And we could say return self dot two underscores and height. And now that we have that set up, what we can do is create a setter function. And a setter function could do something like, let's say the user decides that they want to assign the letter A for height. We could block them from doing that. And how we define that we're using a setter is we go at and the field name, which is height, and then follow that up with setter. And then come in height and whatever the value is that's being passed in. And then here we're gonna protect from getting bad data. So we're gonna say, is the value a digit? And if it is, then we will allow them to assign the value. If it is not, we will not allow them to assign a value. Equal to whatever the value is, else. And then we could print out a warning message or something. Please only enter numbers for height. So you can see how useful a setter is. It protects our data. Likewise, we could go and do exactly the same thing for our width. I'm just going to paste this inside of there. So we'll just change this to width. Retrieving width. And then return the width value. Again, for the setter, we're going to have to change this to width and width. And again, we're going to check if it is a value and change this to width also. And we'll change this to width down here. Now, a function that would be useful to use with squares is the opportunity to find a area. So we'll go get area. And then we can just say return and let's go and convert this into integers because they are strings by default dot and width and then multiply that again convert to an integer and self and height all right so now that we have that all set up we can come in here into main and start creating square objects so we can go square is equal to and square now we don't have to define those values whenever we go and call the initiation function. We could also come in and go and get that information from the user. So we'll say input and enter height. And we can do the same thing for our width. So we'll go and get a value for width and enter width. And then we can say that we want to assign those values and we just assign them just by using dot followed with what we want to pass. So height and once again square and width is equal to whatever the width is that they passed in. And then we can call for if we wanted to go and get those values using our getters we can just say height and then go refer to our squares height. 
and likewise do the same thing for width as well. So just change this to width and then change this to width as well. And then after that we can go and output our areas. So the area is and square dot again get underscore area and there we go and if we run it you can see enter height we change that to 10 width 10 and you can see that it went and printed out retrieving the height retrieving the width and then printed the area all right so there is a brief explanation of how we can work with classes and objects and getters and setters and a whole bunch of other different things that's going to be it for now, but make sure that you go and work on the quiz that is included with this tutorial to reinforce everything you've learned. And in the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to create two warrior objects and have them fight to the death. So like always, please leave any questions or comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.